Hi, and welcome back to the Java Web App Tutorial Series. In the past two videos, we've been working on building this form component, and we're going to finish that work right now by hooking it up to the rest of the application. We want this to work so that we can select contacts in the grid and have them show up here in the form. If no contact is selected, we want the form to hide. And we also want to have a button here that we can use to add new contacts to the system. We want all of this to be responsive so that it works well on smaller devices as well as on desktop. A reminder again, there's a text version of this tutorial up on vaughn.com. You can find a link to that in the show notes below. And there you can find both a link to the GitHub repo. So if you want to just download the code for the starting point that I'm at right now, or if you want to copy paste some of the code that we're doing along this tutorial, you can find all of that there. All right, so let's get started. So I'm inside main view here. We already completed the entire contact form in the previous video, so we don't need to touch that. What we need to define instead is how that interacts with our main view. We already passed in all the companies to the contact form through its uh, constructor. But what we want to do now is define how we pass in those contacts uh, that are selected in the grid to the form and how we show and hide the form depending on whether or not there is a contact selected. So uh, let's start by hiding the form if there is no uh, contact selected. I'm going to create a new method, call it close editor. Use IntelliJ to uh, implement the method. Whenever we close the editor, what we're going to do is first of all, we're going to clear the form. So we're going to set the contact to be null. Then we're going to set the form to not be visible. So we're going to call form.setVisible to false. And finally, we're going to remove a class name that we're using for accomplishing those responsive layouts. So I'm going to remove class name editing. We're going to get to this in a little bit, uh, see how this works. Okay, so now uh, just kind of build this, make sure everything works. If you haven't started the server yet, go ahead and do that. What you should be able to see is that the form disappeared. We only have the grid right now, which is a good starting point. The next thing we want to do is here where we configure the grid, we're going to add a listener for whenever a uh, row gets selected, and then we want to show that in the editor. Let's kind of move these a little bit. Okay, so I'll take the grid as a single select grid. So the grid supports both multiple and single select modes. In this case, we only want to edit one contact at a time. So I'm going to use the as single select and add a value change listener to that. So we'll get a value change event from here. And what we want to do with that event is we want to edit that contact. So we'll call edit contact and then we'll use the events value, which is the contact here. Again, we can use IntelliJ to create this method. Let's rename that to contact like that. And what we want to do here is two things. So depending on if we select a row, if it gets highlighted like this, we will get a contact, whereas if it gets deselected like this, it will give us a null value. So we want to see whichever one of those two things happen. So if the contact is equal to null, then we want to close the editor. So if we deselect it, we want to close it. Else, we want to get the form, we want to set the contact, to this contact that we just got passed in. We want to make sure that's visible. So we're going to call set visible and make it true. And then we're going to do the opposite of what we did here. So we're going to call add class name and pass in this editing like so. All right. So again, let's build this, make sure that we're on the right track. So what we should be able to see here is that when we select a contact, we should see all the values here. Now let's make the window a little bit wider so that we can see them both side by side since we don't have any of the logic implemented to close the editor quite yet. So you can see that if we select different contacts, they get shown here in the form. Uh, so we're off to a good start. The next thing we want to do is hook up the events for saving, deleting and closing the form. 
so that we can update the grid appropriately whenever those things happen, and of course, uh, save the changes to our database. So we'll go up here to our constructor here after we created the form, and we'll add some listeners to our form. So we'll add a listener, and the first listener that we'll add is for this save event. And just be sure that you pick the right save event. There is another save event in one of the VOD and CRM packages, uh, or sorry, VOD and CRUD packages. So don't grab that one, grab the one that you defined in the contact form. Okay, so we add that, and then we're gonna create a uh, save contact method on this class. So we'll use the IntelliJ here to create this again. It'll give us a slightly wonky signature. So we'll change that and just make it a little bit more human readable, like so. All right, so we have the save event here. What we want to do is we want to take the contact service, call save on the contact that's inside of the event. Once we've saved the contact, we want to update the list to make sure that the, any changes are updated there. And finally, we're closing the editor since we're done saving. Okay, so we have the save event now. Let's do the same for delete. So we'll add a listener again for the delete event. And then we're gonna call this dot delete contact like so. Again, we'll do the exact same thing, create the method, clean up the method signature here. So we'll have a void method that takes in the event here, takes in the delete event. And inside here, we're going to first call the contact service to delete the contact from the database. So we'll get the contact, delete it. We'll update the list again, and then we'll close the editor. So pretty much the same as the save contact. The only difference is that we're deleting it from the database instead of saving it to the database. Then for the close event, that's a little bit easier. So we'll add a listener again for the uh, close event. And in this case, we'll have the event and we'll call close editor. So we already had the logic for that. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and build and go to our browser. Let's see if it works. So select something, change this to hello, click save. And we can see that the change is now visible here. Also, let's filter by it. Just make sure that it's actually in the database. You remember the filtering goes all the way to the database. That works. Let's try out delete. That works. Let's try out being in the form and try pressing escape, which should trigger that close event, which it does. So really good progress here. We've created our custom form. We've hooked it up to the rest of the application. The last thing that we're going to do in this video is add a button for creating new contacts into the system. So let's go into our code here and here where we have this configure filter method right now. Let's go ahead and rename this. So I'm going to use the rename command in IntelliJ, and I'm going to change this to get toolbar like this. So you'll see that that actually changed all the way down here. Let's move this method a little bit up here. That's kind of close to the configuring grid here. All right. So Right now, we don't really have a toolbar. We only have the one one uh, text field here by itself. And if you remember from any of the previous videos, if we want to have kind of two components next to each other, there needs to be a horizontal layout. So let's create the button first. So we'll create a new button. And we'll give it a caption of add contact like that. And let's add a click listener to it. So whenever we click, we'll call add contact. 
create this method. Add contact is a straightforward method. We'll first of all get the grid again as a single select and clear it. So if we're creating an entirely new one, we want to make sure that we clear any of the previous selections there. Otherwise, it's out of sync with what people are seeing in the form. Then we're going to call edit contact and pass in a new contact object. So we're able to reuse the same uh, logic that we had from before with the edit contact. But now we're just passing in a new contact object instead of uh, passing in the grid selection. So we have the button here. We'll call this add contact button. And then we need to have a horizontal layout that wraps these two components, the filter text and the button, so that we can have them next to each other. So let's create a new horizontal layout. We'll pass in the filter text and the button. We'll extract this to a variable. Let's call it toolbar. Then we'll give toolbar a class name of toolbar. And finally, I'll return this. So I'll return toolbar. Now this will complain that this avoid method, it's not, shouldn't return anything. So you can use the autocomplete here to make it actually return the horizontal layout, which is what we want to do. So with that, we now actually get a horizontal layout out of this method call. So we can replace the filter text here in our add with the horizontal layout. And that way we have in our vertical main layout here, we have first the toolbar, and then we have the content. So if we build this, we should be able to see that we get a button here for adding contacts. Whenever we click it, we see the form here with empty values. So I'll just add my name here. I will be an imported lead. I'll work for eTech management. Click save. And you can see that I'm here. Let's filter for me and just verify that it works. Okay, so that works. Let's verify the last thing that we wanted this to do, which is to work well on small devices as well. So you can see now that if we're on a smaller viewport, the toolbar gets hidden, the grid gets hidden, and we have all the space here available for our form. If we close it, we get back to uh, seeing the grid here. All of this is powered by this uh, style sheet that we had. So if you remember from a couple of videos back, we added this media query here, where when we are editing the toolbar and the content grid, will get uh, hidden by, by this media query. So that way, by combining a little bit of CSS with the components that we have here in Java, we're able to create a really nice responsive layout that works on any kind of, any kind of device out there. All right, so good job on following this far along. In the next video, we're gonna move on from components and take a look at navigating between different views in the application. So we're gonna create a new view a dashboard view that shows some stats about contacts in our CRM. And we're going to wrap our application into a responsive app layout with a side navigation and a header. So be sure to check out the next video, subscribe to the channel and enable those notifications so that you get notified whenever we have new videos coming out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.